Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, welcome to today's video. We are going to be uh, doing a quick little um, sort of analysis and review of the final of the 70th All Japan Kendo Championships. So here we are, uh, we've got this fantastic video. Uh, this has been uploaded uh, by the fantastic channel um, SW Kendall, I think you can see it there. Um, it's a great channel, go and watch it. I think I think this has been kind of uh, borrowed from the uh, the official broadcast. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, ho hopefully everything will be fine with it and it'll stay up. Uh, there'll be a link to the original video in the description. Um, <clears throat> what a great championship. Um, I wasn't able to watch the whole thing, but the final, wow, what a brilliant final. Um, and some really, really interesting and surprising results. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll get into looking at this video. We'll look at the match itself. There's a few things I want to talk about in relation to it, actually. Um, so I'll get all that off my chest. But before we go any further, don't forget, you know, the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe. But most importantly, keep videos like this and more coming free of charge uh, by shopping at kendostar.com. I'm sure you shop at kendostar anyway. Why would you not at this point? Obviously, it's the best place to shop. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you are anyway, looking at the way things are. So um, I'm sure there's people in your dojo. I know there's, you know, I know there's plenty of alternatives out there and give them a try by all means if you want to. But if you think you can afford to buy twice, that is because in the end, invariably, people come back to us. So, you know, start as you mean to go on and shop at Kendall Star. <laughs> Don't settle for mediocre. Right, okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, we've got a, a great final, all right? Um, now, first off, the first thing I want to talk about about the final is <clears throat> the two competitors. We've got Shaw Andor, okay, world champion. What a fantastic Kendall guy. Love his Kendall. Brilliant. He was great in the world championships um, and he's been great for a long, long time. This was his 10th, his 10th, um, entry into the tournament. Uh, he got, he got, he got presented with a commemorative door as you do, uh, from the All Japan Kendo Federation. They present you with a special door when you've been in it 10 times. And, uh, yeah, um, he was obviously on form, uh, really interesting, um, event for him as well. I think this is the first time for him representing Tokyo. Up to now, he's been representing Hokkaido, the island upon the top, the north, the, the, the prefecture up there. Um, he'd been a police officer until I think it was earlier this year. Um, and then he changed his job. He, he moved to Tokyo and became a uh, teacher um, at Kokushikan University, which is, of course, the university he graduated from. Um, an absolute massive string of titles. I could talk to you probably probably for about half an hour just on uh, Show Andor. In fact, we might do a player spotlight video on him. Um, and conversely, his uh, his opponent uh, in this final, uh, Mr. Tetsuhiko uh, Murakami, is um, relatively unknown. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know much about him at all, to be honest. Uh, he's sort of been flying under the radar. Uh, representative of Ehime Prefecture, um, which is a prefecture on a small island of. It's, it's not that small, but one of the one of the four main islands. It's the smallest of the, the main islands, um, called Shikoku, uh, and it's one of those prefectures on there. Um, he entered it last time, got into the best eight, I believe. Other than that, been in the been in the, the the Kokutai, the sports festival, but doesn't seem to have a particular string of achievements, but played absolutely immensely and uh, got all the way up to the final. So without further ado, uh, let's get into this video. Let's have a look and uh, we'll, uh, we'll sort of stop and start as we go along. There is commentary. Uh, there's a commentator from the television broadcasting uh, company um, who I believe is not a Kendo person. They work for the TV company. And uh, they are commentating together with um, 
somebody who is an experienced Kendall person. I don't recognize the voice and I haven't found yet who it is. I'm sure it's a famous sensei. So if you know who the commentator is uh, alongside, leave it in the comments. Um, it's not someone whose voice I particularly recognize, as I say, um, but I will uh, sort of chime in with any particular relevant comments they make as well, okay? So as you can see, obviously they're still, um, I'll, just before we go a bit further, Obviously, the, the, the rules in Japan are still a little bit different. It's something I'm going to talk about a lot, um, actually, but the rules are a little bit different as to, to what they have been up to now. Uh, for lots of places, um, they're still required to wear masks under their, uh, their men, uh, and most of them wear a shield as well. Um, so that's that's the sort of norm. Uh, because of that, the, the Shi'ai timings have been changed, uh, usually <coughs> from the best eight uh, the Shi'ai timing um, would be 10 minutes, but um, I believe they dropped it to five minutes because of this. And also, uh, if it's a draw, Encho is not uh, unlimited. It's split into, I think it was three minute rounds. Um, and every three rounds is a five minute break. <clears throat> so that's the first noticeable thing straight away. So I believe, so yeah, this is Mr. Murakami. He's fifth Dan. Mr. Andor is sixth down. <clears throat> I believe they're like, I think Mr. Murakami is 30 and Mr. Andor is maybe 31, 32. Murakami is in white and Andor is in red. As you can see here. about to start. <laughs> Should be a good one. It's good to see it back in the Badokan. I know it was last time, but... Okay, good. So straight away, a great Kote attack from Ando. Um, not quite reaching the criteria for Ippon there. Um, Probably slightly off target, not really a crisp strike either, but a great, great, fantastic opportunity, right? Um, but not quite enough. I do know the result of this, but I'm going to try not to spoil it. <laughs> I'm sure most of you do anyway. Excellent. So look, I'm going to pick up on a little point here. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about the actual match soon, but um, one thing I really want to talk about, and it's, re it's really important, I think, actually, is obviously the, the temporary rules are still in place uh, surrounding, you know, Tsubazeriai and stuff like that. And I've talked about this a little bit before, but I think there's this massive tendency to the um sort of over interpret and over apply them i was post the, somebody posted a link a couple of weeks ago to a video um from i think it was from uh, korean shi and every time one of the players just left lifted their hand over to block they were given a hand soccer uh, and i think that's a gross over interpretation of the rule and i said that at the time and there was there was some sort of kickback from comments in there um, saying, no, this is what it says, and this is the intention of the FIK or the ZNKR uh, and all this. But as you can see, and if you watch any All Japan level match, but we've got three Hanshis that are experts on how to shimpan the, the match, and they're very well versed in the rules, including the temporary ones. They are giving us a demonstration of how these rules should be interpreted. Now, the guidelines that are given about the blocking, for example, they say that it could be ha it can be hand soccer if you are constantly blocking and not engaging in shobu, so not actually trying to fight the opponent, yeah, but instead just trying to waste the time. So. I'm bringing this up because there is this moment where both players defend themselves and cl and, and close in. And I, I get asked this, you know, you know, at tournaments over here or stuff like that. People ask, well, what about how strict should we be on the blocking thing? And it's, we've got an example, a clear example. Yeah. Both of these guys, you know, this is not worthy of a hand soccer. Of course it's not because they're still actively engaged in shobu with each other. 
It's not like one of them is just trying to escape and defend themselves because they've got a one point lead or something like that. So it's really important that as we start to see more Shi'i happen and people try to follow the new or the temporary or whatever we want to call it rules that the Z ZNKR have put out, that we don't get it wrong yeah, because they've given us these wonderful examples that we can work from in terms of how these rules should be interpreted and how they should be applied. All right. So I would urge anyone who's involved, especially in refereeing tournaments of any level, take your lead from these referees as to how these rules really need to be considered. OK. So, the commentators are just saying about the Kote strike from Ando just now that um, he, uh, he, although he was pretty much able to reach the target, it wasn't quite good enough for Ippon, perhaps because the, the Hasuji wasn't quite good enough. There's the comment from the commentator. Fantastic Kamai from both. Very, very intense. I think it's very interesting. Um, uh, you know, I think it's very interesting how Murakami is playing the Shi'ai. He's very, very calm. He's very, very much together with himself. He's not rushing. He's not panicking. Um, he's, not, he's not sort of trying to wrap this up quickly. Uh, he's taking his time and he's not making any uh, unnecessary moves, which obviously eliminates the chance of making a mistake. Instead, he's using moves like this to test the water. Okay, what kind of movements, what kind of direction can I expect my opponent to go in? And of course, Andor is, Andor's a reasonably tall guy from memory. Um, but Murakami is even taller than him. Uh, so it, it's interesting to see how Ando is also responding to uh, the, the semi from Murakami. Very interesting. See, so they have a, they have a one breath time to do Hikiwaza into the Zeriai and then they separate. Okay. It's not overly strict. There's a gray zone. Depends on the context. Wow. Okay, so what a beautiful man. What a beautiful man. Let's have a look at that, okay? Let's have a look at that. It's really interesting. Watch it want full speed once more. Wow. So it's, it was almost in slow motion until the last second, wasn't it? <laughs> what I find really interesting about it is Murakami uses a reasonably wide stance uh, and does as well, uh, but his left foot is really planted. Let's let's stick with that at the moment, all right? His left foot, once he's in position, which is pretty much now, pretty much now, especially as Ando starts to move into his distance, it doesn't move again. From there, he's, he's cocked and let it, ready to go, yeah? This is, this is what, this is Tame, right? He's got that Tame here, come on, like this. Ando is unsure with how to deal with this. And then he starts to come forward. And by the time, because he hasn't had to adjust his footwork, Ando just can't deal with it. Now, what I also find really interesting, <clears throat> it's a little bit, I don't know if unorthodox is the right word, but what I really like about it is there's a, there's a like a kind of slightly, um, like offset time into this men's strike. It's like, it's not like your kind of classic um, men's strike. It is, and it's like, it's very, I really like it because it's, it, it, I, was, I was chatting with my wife about it a bit and um, we we're talking about how it's, it's almost the opposite style of Kendo to the women's champion, uh, Suenaga Mari. She's, she's, she's got very explosive, sudden Kendo um, most of the time, not always, but you know, uh, a lot of her waza is very sudden, very explosive. Um, whereas this is almost like, as I say, it's almost like slow motion and bam, this way. So it's sort of, it's sort of managed to affect Ando in this way, where he's like, is, is, he, is he coming or not? kind of thing is, it, is he coming oh yeah he is and by the time he's realized that th this is a real waza um it's too late 
<laughs> it's just too late. So that's great. You see that? You see how it's like... It, it sort of starts in slow motion. This kind of... Uh, this kind of thing. Obviously, it's not slow. <laughs> it's not slow. But the kind of time is like... Uh, bam. Not... Bam, you know? Uh, which I think is super interesting. I really like it. I really like it. That kind of instantaneous change of pace. Really, really, um, really, really is fantastic. And you know, and Ando knows. Ando is like, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> fantastic! What a great uh, use of uh, distance and footwork to make make a fantastic ippon. So obviously Ando is starting to think, I expect that he's got to take one back now. Otherwise, especially these matches are shorter than they used to be. Uh, he's got to take one back. And I think that's starting to show that kind of slight, um, you know, slight, you know, slightly rushed now to try and try and try and deal with it. And, and Murakami's doing a great job throughout this match of not letting that get to him. It'd be really easy to fall into Ando's pace and, um, you know, fall into his rhythm. Uh, and, and if he did that, he's, it's over. It's over because that's what, <clears throat> that's what Ando needs him to do. But he didn't. He's he's he's, he's, he's keeping his he's keeping his cool. In fact, he's just keeping his kamae for the most part, controlling the distance. What a fantastic chance that you see. He's just he's just looking for those perfect chances. Yeah, there's nothing complicated about. I mean, it is complicated. Like I said, that last men strike that was actually pretty complicated for a simple men strike. But he's not trying to do any sort of flashy waza or anything particularly left field. He's he's keeping it. <clears throat> somewhat simple, but he's, he's, he's really just sticking to what's important, not giving any chance for a mistake uh, that could be capitalised on. Oh, See, it, 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 again, he's got this, it's a great chance here. And it, it's again, look at, look, look how his left foot is, once, once this was a starts here, from here, his left foot does not move again. And he's kind of, he started here, and it, it, it's a great, um, great uh, display of of Seme because what he's done is he's taken the initiative here, the Sen, and Ando's reacted to it, but he's realized halfway through and he's kind of, Ando, Ando is clearly at this point, what do you say, like a little bit unsure of how to deal with the situation. Um, he's not able to make strikes confidently <coughs> or, um, approach confidently. So he, he's been controlled here, but luckily he's obviously he's very experienced, he's fast enough, he was able to defend this man, even though it's such a fantastic time, but he wasn't able to deal with it. Yeah, he wasn't able to do maybe the Kaishido or the Debano as himself, um, because Mur Murakami completely had control of the situation. Absolutely beautiful. Excellent. Great chance for Ski there. Really great chance for Ski. I, th I think that was I think that was a really great choice of Waza for Andor. Um <clears throat> especially as uh you know Murakami's playing the Shi'ai very calmly um and he's not you know overly reacting. He's not he's not overly reactive in the Shi'ai. So I think I think Ski was a really good choice for Andor, especially at that moment. I think that was a really good moment for it as well. <clears throat> There's this kind of interaction with the Shinai, ba bam. And then suddenly bam this this ski. Really great chance for it. But just unfortunate that he missed the target. Yeah, just unfortunate. You can see there that the, the Shinai just hasn't quite con made contact. Um and it's it, it's gone well under the men. So um <clears throat> fantastic fantastic uh timing. Great choice of Waza. But just unlucky. Mm -hmm. oh, just unlucky, but unfortunate, I should probably say. <laughs> so you can see he's starting to, uh, he's starting to hesitate now. He's starting to doubt himself. Um, you know, we talk about these sicknesses of Kendo and the, 
you know, it's not just like, like really deep philosophical stuff that you have to care about for Hachidan and stuff like that. It, it's relevant to Shi'ai as well. And you can see how he's, he's starting. It's not even starting, he's been doing it for a while. He's, he's starting to doubt himself, starting to hesitate. Not sure what, how to deal with this, with this opponent that won't fall into his rhythm. You know, he's, he's throwing attacks out here that don't really have much rhyme or reason. Hoping to, hoping to sort of chip away at that defence and that he can maybe find something. But it's just not there. It's just not there. It's, you know, Murakami's just a solid wall. There's no, there's no way around it. And you can see it's almost like he's stood on a hill and 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 Ando's trying trying to fight his way up it and just just can't can't manage it. And that was a great chance for Kote Men as well, wasn't it? That was such a you know, that was that was that was probably close to be fair. So this is a good this is a good chance for a strike as well, and I think the ski again was a good choice for Ando. Um this is probably better than his last one uh, because that that is one of the um, the set uh, what do you call it like opportunities to strike in kendo is is after an opponent finishes a technique you've got this kind of point, this oh, bang, and he, he comes there before he's able to reset himself and um, so absolutely fantastic again great display from Andover a brilliant um, sort of opportunity and timing to strike just again unfortunately yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't quite able to make the maybe one well, i think that's just a thing because it's been streamed from a live recording <laughs> yeah see he's, he's really struggling to find a way in it's just not there and there we go bam look at that look at that so this is this is it also a real you know he knows as well. It's a really um, excellent example of how Ando's hesitation, Murakami was able to affect um, Ando's mental game so much. He just he just was a little bit hesitant. You know this is a good 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 chance for the degote, but the the problem is is Murakami took Murakami took the initiative here. You see this, see how he steps in, he starts this, and then he's totally reacting. And he's, he's sort of hesitant at the same time. And of course, he, ca he can't make the strike on target, okay? Um, and you get that fantastic. Uh, men. Uh, so yeah, wow. What a beautiful CI. Absolutely uh, textbook stuff. Um, we'll have a quick look at the replays of the deep bonds so we can see them. <clears throat> so this is the first time a representative from Ehime Prefecture has, has won this championship apparently, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. As I say, real bolt, bolt out of the blue, Murak. I mean, I absolutely didn't expect to see him uh, do so well. Um, and yeah, um, obviously Ando played that Shi'ai really, really well as well, with, given what he was, you know, presented with. See, so look at that, you see, that because... Um, He's using that, uh, this is the first one here, where I'm talking about that sort of split rhythm, that sort of off offbeat timing. And already Andor has got that sort of hesitation because he's struggling to deal with trying to find a way in. He gets him at this point where he's like, oh, <gasps> you know, and this is another one of those textbook um, chances for Ippon. Uh, it's called the Aitega Itsuita Tokuro, when they've sort of frozen. I know he hasn't frozen, but he has, by the time he's realised that Murakami's on the way for men, it's too late and he can't respond. And Ando is a real fast guy, he's so fast. So if he, he, you know, he can block real fast, but just that timing just put him off, um, off beat, if you know what I mean. Um, so what, what a fantastic uh, many bomb. Really, really great. Yeah, see, so he just, he just, his his left, his left, left. I'm pointing at the screen, can't see. His his left leg here is just planted, 
and just takes him there. But again, you can see how he's kind of slow and fast. And it's hard to see in slow motion, I guess, but it's kind of, because it's not slow, even slow, but slow, but it's not slow. It's kind of like, uh, bam, this way. But it doesn't really look like that. It's kind of, bam, this way. Real good. Re really, really interesting. Really, really interesting way to set up men. I really, really like it. I really, really like it. And here's that uh, second one. As you can see, um, like I say, Murakami actually is taking the initiative. He's taking the Sen here. Um, you see that there? And, and Ando's only uh, option is to react, try for that Kote. <coughs> But it, it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows that, you know, but in the instant, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's just not possible to go through that thought process, right? So, um, because, again, as I say, I think, I think that Murakami did such a great job of controlling the Shi'ai and um, sort of affecting Andor's ability to... Uh, sort of mentally interact, um, which is no detriment at all to Andal, none whatsoever, because I, I think he played this match fantastically as well. Um, I don't think that this match is like a, I don't think this is like a beat down on Andor at all. I think, I think, you know, Andor did the best, you know, it's just, I think he did the best uh, he could with what he had because <clears throat> Murakami was just um, sensational in this CI, <laughs> frankly. So that's, that's Kendo though, right? That's, that's Kendo, that's, that's the Shobu. Yeah, everybody, um, it, it, you know, these guys, it, it could be, it could be, and probably is the case that these guys have often done CI together and almost, and, and it could be that Andor wins, you know, nine out of 10 times, but this was the one. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the ten that that, that Murakami is uh, is on fire. So um, I don't know that. That's just me speculating, of course. But <clears throat> I do know that they're both. Uh, I do believe they're both part of the the, the Japanese national uh, team selection process at the moment. So I'm sure that they are familiar with each other. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> there we go. What a fantastic match. Um, one of my favourite. Uh, all Japan Championships finals I've seen in a long time. Um, again, a couple of points I'd like to just stress. You know, if you are involved in refereeing at all, don't just look at the Kendall. <clears throat> Do look at that, but look at how this match is refereed. That tells you how the rules are supposed to be applied. All right? It's very clear from this. It's very clear from this that you're not supposed to be involving yourself in the Shi'ai unnecessarily if you're a Shimpan. All right? which is the tendency that lots of us have, you know, when we get into doing shimpan, we want to show everyone that how good of a shimpan we are. And that's not what you're there to do. Okay. <clears throat> it's absolutely not what you're there to do. I think as well, I think this was a really great match and a really interesting contrast to the women's championships. Um, and I, I don't mean that in a, in a sort of positive negative contrast at all. I think they were both equally fantastic. Um, I did do, I think I did do a review on the women's one a few, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I don't think it would be fair to say, um, that the, the, you know, the type of Waza is different and equals this one is better. I don't think that at all. I think both are equally amazing. Um, I think Suenaga, uh, Mari's achievement in the women's championships was, was absolutely brilliant also. And I think her Kendall throughout it was amazing. Um, <clears throat> and same goes for, for Murakami and Ando in this match. Um, so yeah, uh, a great display of Kendo, great display of refereeing. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this video useful and, uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.